Our scripture reading would be taken from Revelation chapter 1. For time, I would do selective voices, voices of the scripture. Revelation 1, chapter 1, verse 1 says the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servant things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ, of whom all things that he saw. Where he say, for time, I am out from the meager, the beginning and the end, the Lord which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. I join who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. was in the isles that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and he heard behind me a great voice of a trumpet. I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write. in a book and sent it unto the seven churches, 1617. And he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me saying unto me, fear not. I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. He has the keys. If I should choose for a topic today, I want to choose the presence of God in difficult times. The presence of God in difficult times. Now John was on the Isle of Patmos, an island eight miles long and five miles across the northern coast. The crescent shape provides a protective harbor. The volcanic hills rising over 800 feet high is surrounded by water. While banished to the island, John the Apostle received the vision. But in spite of his isolation on the island, John declared that he was in the spirit. John declared he was on the, not only in the spirit, but he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Although physically barred from the crowd, his spirit was free to soar into the presence of God. Moreover, this accord on the Lord's day. The Lord's day referred to the first day of the week. Now John was so overcome with the vision that he collapsed. But Christ strengthened him, pointing out that he should be encouraged and not afraid. For Christ has authority over death. Persecuted believers need not fear that death will separate them from the Lord. The word of God says in Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10, it says, Fear not, for I am with thee. 
Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Fear not. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, of love, and a disciplined mind, or a sound mind. Now, perhaps the worst time in John's life brought him to a decision he may have asked. Will I become better or bitter? As a result of this difficult time, John on the Isle of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. When difficult times come your way, when you have prayed every prayer you know, apply everything you have been taught and still feel isolated on the Isle of Patmos. Hallelujah. Everything, and you still feel isolated. But Jesus Christ will not forsake us. He will come to you like he came to John in these difficult times. He came to John in three different ways. Number one, he came to John as a comforter. How many know he is a comforter? Do not be afraid, he said. You don't have to be fearful because I give you a disciplined mind. Jesus placed his hand on John. Jesus spoke comfort to John. Sometime when you are all alone, and you pray to the Lord, Jesus would come to you in your time of trouble. He will not forsake you. He will not leave you alone, but he would come to you. He is a deliverer. Jesus spoke comfort to John. He said, fear not. Fear in the Fair, as you look in the Bible, we find fair 366 times in the Bible. But he told John to fear not. Sometimes we fear. This pandemic caused us to fear. We went through during, during the hurricane. And it caused us to fear. But we don't need to fear because we have Jesus on our side. He is the deliverer. He will deliver us. So he came to John as the comforter. How many know that the comforter is here? Comforter. Number two, not only a comforter, but he came. The second one, he came to John as the the, the, the conqueror, not only the comforter, but the conqueror in verse 18. The conqueror, he is. How many know he is the conqueror? He is a conqueror, he came. He said, I was dead, and I am alive forever. Ever and ever. That means that he is alive forevermore. You could not keep him down. <laughs> they place him in a borrowed tomb. They seal the tomb. But early a Sunday morning, he get up out of the tomb and he walk out and he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He has all power. He's a conqueror. He conquered it. He is a conqueror. Conquered dead. Jesus is alive. 
We don't serve a dead Jesus. But he is alive. And that he is alive forevermore. Serve him. Live Jesus. He is bigger than any problem. <laughs> you have problem? Let me tell you, you have some problems. You're going through some problems today. He is bigger. Let me introduce you to this man called Jesus. He is bigger than any problem. You have some cares. The word of God said we must cast all of our cares upon him. Why? Because he cared. He cared for you. He's a care. You don't need to wonder why he cares. He's bigger. He's bigger than any care. And then number three. He is the carrier of the keys. I said he is the carrier of the keys. He said, I have the keys of death and Hades. He have the key. If Jesus Christ has the key, then the devil doesn't. I said, if Jesus have the keys, we know the devil does not have, <laughs> have, have the key. Hell has never created a lock Christ cannot open. Let me say it again. <laughs> Christ has all power. Christ has the keys. We know the devil doesn't. Hell has never created. Never. Say never. never. Say never. never. Hell has never created a lock that Christ shall not. Not will not. Christ, that devil, listen, he cannot. He cannot. Christ has all power and authority. All power and authority he has. I like what Jesus told Peter. Peter, on this statement, on this profession, you made on this statement. I grant you authority on the statement, the gates of hell cannot prevail. How many know that? The gates of hell cannot prevail. Jesus came and spoke to the disciples saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Then he told them to go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Be safe because Jesus has the keys. The presence of God in difficult times. How many know sometimes we go through difficult times, but God promised never to leave us. Amen? Amen. My mind go quickly on Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat faced the greatest crisis of his life, and he feared God. He was fearful. When he heard that those nation was coming against him, he called a proclaimed fast. What a proclaimed fast does is cause all of our minds to focus and go in one direction so we can hear 
what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. So Joseph, Jehoshaphat called a proclaim fast because he was fearful. He don't know what to do. And they start to pray. And they got the answer, little fella, Jehaziel, Jehaziel, said, look, the Lord said, we don't have to fight in this battle because the Lord will fight for you. The Lord will deliver you. He is a deliverer. Whatever you're going through today, let me tell you, let me testify to you that God delivers. He delivers Shadrach, Meshach, and the Bendigo from the burning fiery furnace. This same God can deliver you. Whatever you face today, he is a, a deliverer. He will deliver you. He delivered Daniel. They threw Daniel in the lion's den and they thought they would meet just blood and bones. But when they came back, Daniel used the lion as a pillar because God was on Daniel's side. I don't know what God, I said the same God, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego served. I serve the same God, Daniel served. He is a deliverer. He is a battle axe. Trust him. And if you trust him and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. Some of us need to come out some things but let me testify and say to you today trust God trust God your, your situation is not your destination your situation is not your destination you might be going through something now, but hold on a little while. Have a little talk with Jesus. Allow him to deliver you. Allow him to fix it for you. And if Jesus fix it, everything will be all right. That's the kind of God that we serve. I like what Romans 8, 35 says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? For thy sake we are killed all the day long. All the day long. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loveth love us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor any other creature shall separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Your situation is not your destination. You don't have to stay there. It's not your death destination. He will bring you out. He brings Jehoshaphat out, bring Elijah out, and he can bring us out. All we have to do is trust him, for he cares for us. You know, I love this song from the hymnologist in watching time, and I'm going to had soon, but it says, does Jesus care? You, Jesus cares. He see your tears. When you're all alone at night, and you cry out to the Lord for help. He see those tears. The song says, does Jesus care? When my heart is pain, too deeply for mirth and song. 
As the burdens press and the cares distress and the way grows very long. Oh yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary, the long nights sometimes so dreary, I know my Savior. The other word says that Jesus cares when I try and fail to resist temptation strong, temptation strong. When for my deep grief I find no relief, though my tears flow all the night long. Does he cares? Oh yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched. His heart is touched. And my conclusion today, if you feel alone in your difficult times, let Christ come to you. He will be a comforter to you. He will be a conqueror to you and a carrier of any key you need. He will come to you in your darkest hour. Amen. He will come. He would be there for you. Whatever you face with today, tonight, this morning, whatever you're going through, in your darkest time, in your darkest hour, Jesus Christ will be with you. He is the lifter of your head. He wants to strengthen you. I believe he's getting ready to do something great in evangelistic temple. I believe that it's very soon, right, right on the brink, revival will break forth in this place. I can feel it in my bones that he's getting ready to do something. Only if you continue to pray and believe God, the Lord would come through. Help us. Not only us, when it happens, it's, it is to help the country. Not only, not only this church, but the country, those that sacrifice every morning on the line, those that sometimes you might not see, but interceding. Some are intercessors. You might not hear them, but they're interceding. They are intercessors pleading and praying for this church for revival to come forward and break forward but very soon right at the break the revival would break forth in this land and everybody would know everybody would know I believe the news media would come round to see what's happening at evangelistic temple and when they come all we gotta do is share the word of God with them and I believe some of them would lay prostrate because of the anointing and the presence of the almighty God that's the kind of God that we serve be serving an awesome God and he would do it for us oh if you only pray if you only believe God that he will do it he would do anything he says all power he has the power all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth the grave could not keep him down, you know. <laughs> ah, they placed him in Joseph Barto. But early, early, one Sunday morning, he get up and he walk out and he said, All power is given unto me 
in heaven and in earth. He has all power. All power. The devil don't have power. Jesus has the power. He has all power. So whatever you face with today, let us stand together. I believe God will open the locks, some locks for you. If you don't fear, if you just trust him, he will come to you as the comforter, as the conqueror, as the carrier of the keys. As he said to Peter, upon this statement, listen, you can do exploit in the kingdom of the Almighty God. Notice he didn't say to Peter a key. He said keys. He could open a lot of stuff. I said, we can open a lot of stuff. We don't have one key. If you have one key to come to the church door, that's all that key can open. But if we give you the keys to the kingdom, we have the keys. I said, we have the keys to the kingdom. And we can open a lot of stuff. If you're here today,